are mentally ill people violent? I think that's an important question because it has um, connotations in terms of how the public approaches people with mental illness, mental health policy, how we deal with any form of mental illness. So in a word, no. People with mental illness, various versions of mental illness may present with symptoms of violence. It could be verbal violence, it could be sexual violence, it could be physical violence as a symptom of the illness. Where, for example, if they are under the influence of a substance, they may present violently. If they are having, for example, a mood disorder and they're having a manic episode, the irritability might cause them to be verbally violent. However, more than anything from this interview, I want you to understand that persons with mental illness are more likely to suffer violence than they are to give out violence. Mm -hmm. True. Um, yes, just to add on that, um, people with mental illness are not more violent than people without a mental illness or people in the general public. And even with persons who um, have a mental illness and uh, they may be involved in acts of violence, a lot of the time there are other risk factors that are playing a role. It's not a direct causal link in terms of the mental illness is causing the violence. For example, um, as uh, Dr. Mumbi said, um, are they under the influence of a substance? Um, are they from a difficult or poor um, socioeconomic background where Maybe there's crime in their neighborhood, uh, there's a lack of opportunity, and so on and so forth. So, um, no, uh, people with mental illness are not uh, violent, at least not more violent than people without. Violence happens despite whether someone is mentally ill or not. In the criminal justice system, who will be more represented? persons with mental illness or persons without mental illness? The answer is the same. Because within the criminal justice system, there is victims and there's perpetrators of violence. As previously stated, persons with uh, mental illness are more likely to suffer harm. Therefore, they're more likely to be representative of the victims of violence. Just like Persons without mental illness can suffer violence. Persons with mental illness can suffer violence. So they are not overrepresented within the criminal justice system as perpetrators of violence. Additionally, we need to separate mental illness from bad behavior. Someone with bad behavior is someone with bad behavior. So laziness aggression, um, any other form of violence is bad behavior versus someone who is in a dangerous situation and acts to protect themselves. Someone who's gone through a, a previous traumatic incident and is hyper alert, hyper sensitive. So we need to take, as Dr. Kashi has said, we need to take various factors into consideration and not simplify the situation to mental illness equates to violence. Statistically, I, I would go with the general public uh, because um, you know persons with um, mental illness who you know have symptoms of violence tend to be quite rare. It's not as common. Um, as uh, what you'd see in the general public. And also, um, as Dr. Mumbi said, uh, we, we have to separate mental illness from bad behavior, from conduct issues, for example. Um, you may find that the person has a history of violence despite whether they had a mental illness or not. Um, and that may be the contributing factor um, um, of that. So. Uh, I would go with the um, general public. Um, there's physical violence uh, where the person is uh, beaten or physically abused or even um, incarcerated or you know 
put in chains and so on and so forth. Uh, there's also emotional violence, which uh, involves a lot of uh, verbal abuse um, and insults as well. Uh, we also have um, social violence. And in social violence, uh, it, it includes things like stigma, for example, or being stereotyped or discriminated uh, wrongly. Yeah. What do you think? In addition to that, yeah. our, our society is highly political. Mm -hmm. A person with mental illness, as of now, does not have the right to vote. That is a perpetuation of social violence because they have the capacity to choose who they want to lead them, just like you and I. And just like <laughs> everyone else makes mistakes, they should be allowed to make their mistake independent of the fact that they have mental illness. They are also um, faced with a lot of sexual abuse. A patient who's having, for example, a manic episode could have disinhibition. And due to the fact that they have that symptom at that time, they are highly likely to be promiscuous. Not of their choosing, and it is not with their authority. Just like someone who is under the influence of a substance, and they are, for example, skimpily dressed, they may not be in a position to give accent. But because they are available, and because they are usual, because it is habit, not knowing that this person is actually undergoing severe mental illness. The depression is driving them to bend themselves backwards to the society, such that they are now given extra duties, extra responsibilities. They overextend themselves at work, trying to get approval, right? And this is an extension of abuse and violence upon their persons. But the society would not recognize that because the only common forms of mental illness that are known or acceptable or recognized are the overt, loud, you know, dirty sort of mental illness. But mental illness looks quiet. It looks like that person who will never say no. It looks like that person who is the last person to close the bar. It looks like that person who is unkempt. It looks like that person who is afraid to drive in traffic because they have social anxiety. It looks like that person who might find themselves overcharged and they're not able to refute, they're not able to stand up for themselves. Those are all forms of violence that can be faced by the pe people with mental illness, mm -hmm. but we don't recognize because it doesn't look like the dirty. Yeah. It's not always obvious. Yes. Yeah. Mental illness is not just loud yeah. and dirty and suicide. There are so many other forms of mental illness that many people are suffering from. But because they keep quiet, we don't recognize. Because they are, the, the, the wheel is running and the, the business is running, you, you overlook that this person is crying in the bathroom every day. You overlook that this person has lost significant amount of weight. But because the business is running, because they do their duties, we overlook them. So those would be social and those would be economic forms of violence upon this patient. You, you also have financial um, financial abuse. Um, there are some mental health condition or some mental illnesses that um, have symptoms of disinhibition and impulsivity. And you may find that um, there, there may be some people who take advantage of that. This person is buying us everything, for example, or we're going on a spending spree. Right. So we also have uh, financial um, uh, forms of abuse and um, in terms of mental illnesses we have over 200 different classifications and as Dr. Mumbi said uh, it's not only um, you know the, the, the acute or the, or the, or the dirty or, or unkempt, um, it's, it's, it's made up of different shades of grey. Um, it aggravates the mental um, health condition. Um, for example, it can lead to the development of um, certain comorbidities that are trauma-related. For example, post-traumatic stress disorder and even substance use disorder. 
Um, also, um, you, you may find that it contributes to the stigma. So you find that um, a lot of people may, may feel apprehensive or not come and seek help uh, because the, of fear maybe they may be attacked or um, they, they may be stigmatized one way or another. So it, it makes people, a lot of people afflicted by mental illness to suffer in silence. What do you think, Doc? I agree. Yeah. And to extend that, mm -hmm. it also moves to economic um, factors. Mm -hmm. It affects them economically. Mm -hmm. When I'm going for a promotion and I have a history of, for example, a manic episode at work, mm -hmm. That will be a point against me despite all the good work. I could have worked at this company for 10 years and I've been a good employee, building, adding to the business, but immediately had that one manic episode. Now it, you call into question, do I have a mental capacity to do this work? This one can't get a promotion. We can't give them because now they'll go and talk. They'll be in charge of going to talk to other people. They'll be representing us. All this time I've been toiling away, doing my work, yeah. but suddenly because of that one episode, mm. I have a challenge with substance use disorder. Mm. When you give me the computer, I'm able to write the program, I'm able to do the work. But in my off time, I have a substance use disorder. Mm. So suddenly because you have now learned about it, because we are now coming back to the workplace, you now see me unkempt after a night out. Mm. You see me in the morning when I've taken something as an eye opener, you now start calling into question all the good work ethic that I've had, yeah. right? So not only is there economic um, impact in that way, yeah. even in the society, suddenly now as a leader, because I had that one episode, now you start calling into question, do I have the capacity to hold that leadership position? Mm -hmm. In the family, when the family is making a decision, I am overlooked because who you anakwanga na shida who you you don't even invite me to the unpredictable yes you don't even invite me to the social gatherings mm. because eh who you at jubile atafanya hiyo siku right yeah. so it impacts me not only financially not only economically mm. psychologically yeah. there's addition of trauma yeah. and then on top of that i am suffering with the illness yeah. right so how many people are willing to stand by me? For example, if I now had, I went on a, a thread of, I posted on my social media, funny messages. Suddenly now everyone knows, Huyo, mm. Huyo Anakwanga Nashidas. Now I have an ad additional tag to my name. Mm. I could have been such a good um, content creator. I've been doing food videos all along. Mm. And then when I had an episode, I put in some strange messages, suddenly now I got less viewership mm -hmm. because everyone is associating me with my utterations one time, yeah. right? Like being labeled. Yes. Mm -hmm. Whereas the general population, the general public are given many chances to make mistakes, yeah. many chances to grow. But the one time a person with mental illness makes a mistake mm -hmm. might be one time too many. Mm -hmm. So the impact is in every facet of their life. Mm -hmm. And that's what unfortunately drives stigma. Mm -hmm. True. There's even a lot of like self-esteem issues that you find um, are perpetuated by this. Um, th there are many people who have had like one episode and based on the response and reaction of that episode, um, they, they, they feel like a lack of confidence to continue their endeavors of life. They keep maybe doubting themselves or questioning themselves uh, at work, in their personal lives. So you find even the self-esteem to just continue with their endeavors of life, to continue with uh, um, pursuing their goals and their dreams is also affected uh, in that way. Yeah. More so, mm. there's even the impact of the illness on the person. Yeah. They could gain weight due to their medication. Mm -hmm. They could yeah. have low libido due to the medication. Mm -hmm. The society, because it's in its ignorant state, is unwilling to give that allowance. Yeah. So they're already doing their best to mm -hmm. get better, mm -hmm. but even in their efforts, yeah. you don't look the yeah. same. They're being body shamed. <laughs> they're being body shamed. Yeah. They're being left because now the uh, mm. is not performing the yeah. way they used to perform. Right. All sorts of issues. Mm -hmm. 
and these are all forms of violence yeah. against a person with mental illness. Mm. Ah, nice. Now we are getting it. Oh, <laughs> maza, maza kuenjua tanyo wenyewe. Eh? That's nice. Another mm. one minute, man. <laughs> 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 okay, another one. Um, many people are afraid of letting their employer know they have mental illness. What are the, the pros and cons of this? Pros and cons of letting your employer know about your mental illness. Mm. Eh, that's a complex one. Yeah, I think <laughs> it's a hard one yeah, it because depends. Mm-hmm. let me a pro. If you are in a very good work environment, which is receptive, if they know, they can create systems to support you. For example. A patient who develops um, social anxiety disorder. If your boss knows and there's there's potential and there's space for it, they will give the allowance of remote work, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. But if your boss is not understanding, they will now equate you not being able to work at the office mm-hmm. with you not being able to work, which mm-hmm. is not true, mm-hmm. right? So in that case, it could be a pro it could be a con, mm-hmm. right? If more people came out and were open about their mental health status at the workplace, and with the awareness that we're driving and with the critical awareness in the community, then we would have more workplace mental health policies which support anyone. Because the idea is that mental health, mental illness is for all. Yeah. It does not discriminate. So if we create a, we- a mental health workplace policy without knowing about anyone's mental health status, that means if they have a situation, we have systems. But because of the stigma, because immediately I report that um, I have depression, then everyone now starts saying, usimwambie, usimpatie kazi mingi, hawezi kumanage stress, uh, so you have given up on a potentially very hardworking and lucrative personnel because of the idea and the myth that depression equals laziness, that depression equals incapacity. Yet depression is illness. Yeah. Just like if you broke your leg, it is illness. We will now not say you are not capable of doing work. It is you are not capable of walking on that leg. Mm-hmm. You see that idea that physical illness is 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 well addressed and it is known, but mental illness it becomes a general status. <laughs> it becomes your walking illness, like your defining is, factor. Is that is all yeah. right? Yeah. But if we looked at it in a different way, where we think someone who has spectacles. Mm-hmm. They're walking yeah. with their illness mm-hmm. in our faces yeah. and we accept it. <clears throat> yeah. We don't say, no, who you are, how is it? No, we make allowances. We say, um, maybe we need to be, uh, make a bigger font, change the type, all those things. Mm-hmm. The same thing goes for mental illness. Mm-hmm. If your workplace knows that, in the example I gave earlier, you have anxiety and are not, or you are autistic and you're not. You're not able to recognize social cues and they say okay rather than calling this person rather than having that confrontational approach let us text them mm-hmm. let us email them yeah. right just making that small allowance mm-hmm. will make this person do excellent work in a comfortable environment where the business is benefiting and the individual is benefiting mm-hmm. right so that's a con yeah. again it, it's a pro again yeah, a con, a con yeah. so the question is pros and cons they're the same mm. it depends on the environment yeah. rather than the individual mm. Mm. yeah i was gonna say that um it depends on the environment if you have an employer that or or you work in an institution or company that um just understands uh, mental health and mental illness um then disclosing it uh, can have its pros and its pros can be um, as Dr. Tari mentioned they can be able to set 
reasonable and understandable structures that allow you to work at your fullest potential um, and, and create an environment that is conducive for your mental health and, and, and your wellness. Uh, you may find that also um, the company may have benefits um, uh, or policies that really um, help in terms of treatment, uh, recovery and, and wellness um, of, of the mental illness. And I think it would even play a big role in breaking the stigma because um, it would be setting a positive tone. People are able to see, okay, this is someone who has a mental illness and they're able to accomplish all their KPIs at work and, and achieve all uh, the things we ask for the <clears throat> from the person. Um, and, and, and I think um, in that, uh, alone it would it would break the stigma so in, in in that case if if the company is understanding about those things then that can be a pro now if now the company or the institution or the employer does not understand it can be a con in in terms of maybe you're finding that the person is not getting um, the same growth opportunities um, other employers I mean other employees are getting um, specifically employees who don't have a mental illness, you may find they're being micromanaged or they're being given less and less work to a point of being redundant. Uh, you, you may find that confidentiality is also being breached and as a result the person is being stereotyped or harassed or stigmatized at work, which also now uh, becomes um, another recipe for, 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 for the difficulty, um, I mean, for, for the mental illness to be aggravated. So it, it depends, it depends really on, on the environment or the workplace. Um, yeah. And that's not to say that we have to have the previous understanding. Yeah. What we are asking for is, be if you don't know, be open to learn, mm. right? Mm -hmm. Because we might say culturally, we don't know about this, mm so we don't have policies mm -hmm. but be open to learn be open to have someone who is dedicated to be a support system for the employees because again mental illness does not discriminate yeah. today it could be me tomorrow it could be you yeah. one in four adults will <clears throat> suffer mental illness during their lifetime so that assumption that it is them and us, mm -hmm. one in four. Mm -hmm. So wherever you're looking at this video from, if you're four, <laughs> <laughs> one of you, <laughs> <laughs> one in four. Mm -hmm. So the more you learn, and you might not be able to make all the policies change at once, mm -hmm. right? But if you're open to changing one thing at a time, one thing at a time, cumulatively, the compounded effect of all these changes will be such that, heaven forbid, that you are the one who gets a mental illness after 20 years of work because you have been generally, gradually changing the mental health um, workplace policies. When you have your crisis, there's support. Yeah. There's no stigma, right? So prepare for yourself. What would you want? Mm. If you want the understanding, if you want the grace, you want the allowances, you want the systemic supports, start creating them potentially for yourself. And that way it becomes easier for everyone to change. If at the marketplace we had a quiet space for, say, someone who gets a panic attack mm -hmm. or a child with autistic um, on the autistic spectrum who gets an attack, who gets an episode, they have somewhere where they can go and they can calm down. And the environment and the, um, the people within are understanding. That means if you are the one who has an epileptic attack, right? And that's just a medical situation. Yeah. You have space where you can go and <coughs> recover. So people should prepare not for them, prepare for yourself. Yeah, so, yeah. And hope you never need it but if you do mm -hmm. there's that allowance mm -hmm. yeah be the employer you'd like to have <laughs> pretty much <laughs> yeah. Yeah. the simple answer is yes mm -hmm. do not complicate it yeah right 
just take it that if you were if you had diabetes would you tell your partner yes so if you have mental illness should you tell your partner yes let them make an informed choice because again you're choosing your partner for life this is support for life mm. so when you have a mental illness an episode you need your partner to be aware educated empowered mm. right so it should not this is not a difficult some of the other questions have been difficult yeah, this is not is. a difficult <laughs> question it's simply yes yeah. just like they would see if you had a short limb mm. it is not do i disclose that i have a short limb they can see it. Yeah. let them choose mm. because once they make the informed choice then it is not i've sprung something about it's not manipulation yeah. it is not hiding it's not secrets mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's just that one is a very simple yes yeah yeah i think um and also is it i don't know i i don't think it's 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 practical to hide it <laughs> it, it, it will reach a point because with mental illness um there are times you can be doing everything right but these symptoms can manifest or or, or or relapses can happen and that will affect how you function there can be some behavioral changes and the person will see this uh, I think it's best that it's disclosed from the beginning um, as Dr. Terry said uh, so that it the, the person makes an informed decision um, they are working with the facts they're not you know trying to figure out okay what's wrong with my wife or my my, my husband you know they're working with the facts so that they can know how to help the person and you may find that they have resources and information uh, that may be beneficial uh, for for um, your recovery and treatment so yeah the simple answer is is yes and also mental illness has a genetic component to it yeah right so it's good for this person to know just like they would see um, people in your family at all mm. it's good for them to also accept and be informed that potentially they would create children with someone who has this mental illness but that is not to say that this would hinder you from getting your partner mm. because technically choosing your partner is the best person for you mm. so if this person has if you've got to the point where you're choosing a partner for life yeah. then they already know all the good and all the bad about you add one more mm. right it should be just that straightforward yeah. i have debt mm. <laughs> i'm bad with money <laughs> i have a psychotic episode every yeah. once in a while mm. straightforward mm. most of the time if this is your person this is your partner yeah. they've seen so much good in you mm-hmm. that one negative mm-hmm. will not overdo overlook make them overlook all yeah. the other positive aspects mm-hmm. it's not your defining you. it's not your defining factor yes you know there, there are so many things about you that you can only look at one thing and say okay this is what defines you and we forget the rest so yeah um one is um, avoid confrontation um at that point um if there's you know a bubble back and forth uh, that should be avoided like trying to respond in a calm manner you can give the person um you know just some physical distance or some space as well and if if you feel that the person um is uh, at a level where they are danger to themselves or or others then just contacting the the necessary or the appropriate resources, either a mental health crisis team, uh, it could be a hospital, um, and it could also be uh, the authorities. However, it's important that even the authorities uh, treat the matter uh, with the sensitivity and dignity that it deserves because the person uh, is dealing with a condition and it's not a character issue. Okay, so from my perspective, the first thing is safety first, Mm. right? You must be safe, they must be safe. Mm. We are doing work with the security services, the administrative Mm. services to educate them, Mm -hmm. right? And to be honest, in most village situations, the chief, the sub-chief, Nyumbakumi, 
have dealt with so many versions of aggression. I don't use the word violence. Mm. Aggression mm. that most of the time they are trained to deescalate. So with an educated population, mm. most people will know to deescalate because in my experience, once someone is violent, you cannot outviolent the violence, right? So you think someone is weak until they're having a violent episode. Mm-hmm. Then they suddenly become superhuman. So trying to aggressively manage this situation, mm-hmm. you escalate a situation to very high levels for no reason. In most cases, calmly speaking. Mm-hmm. To be honest, mental health practitioners experience less violence from their patients. So considering our patients are the mentally ill and we experience less violence than practitioners in other fields of medicine, that means if we can be trained to de-escalate, so can the population. There's a few outlier situations and those are unfortunate. But out of every 10, nine can be de-escalated. So if we focus on those nine, even the stigma, even the myth that mental illness is equal to violence would change. Yeah. Because now you, everyone now knows de-escalate the situation. Mm. You can, again, you cannot out-violence mm. a person having a violent episode. Mm. So don't try. Yeah. yeah. De-escalate it calmly, sometimes even just leaving them alone, mm. right? Yeah. Just like, for example, if you have a baby screaming, can you out scream the baby? <laughs> you cannot out scream the baby. So the same thing, you won't scream at the baby and then they keep quiet. Mm-hmm. You try to calm them down. Yeah. Same thing with people with mental illness. Mm-hmm. If they're having a violent episode, most of the time they get worse when you shout at them, mm-hmm. when you're aggressive to them. And that's why, for example, in Madare, the guards, the security system are more likely to suffer violence than the mental health practitioners because we know to de-escalate. Yeah. We're not trying to mm. compete, mm. right? Or we'll one-up each other. <laughs> you can't know that. Like, no, no. Mm. Right? Yeah. So de-escalate mm. and then always remember, you must be safe mm. to keep someone else safe. Mm. Just like in a plane, they always say, when pressure changes and the masks come down, first put on a mask on yourself, yeah. then on the person who you're taking care of. Mm. Same thing. Mm. Make sure you are safe mm. and then keep the other person safe. Your self-care doesn't mean you're selfish. <laughs> 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 so your self-care comes first. And, and also, um, again, it's not the mental illness having a direct you know, causal link to, to the violence. There may be other factors playing a role, you know, um, other risk factors playing a role, even in that situation. I think advocacy, yeah. education are key, mm-hmm. right? So if, if we're five of us in a bus stop and we have seen an episode we have seen something happening and we suspect that it is an episode of mental illness if within the five of us one of us had some information about mental illness and we were to discuss it openly without using words like huyo ameguruka mm. huyo amechizi this one amerogoa mm. this one <laughs> that's that you know mm sort of situation where now we discuss and we open and say huyo ni so and so tunamjua so first of all we make them a human being we've removed that they are just that situation that has happened they become they are a human being we humanize the face of mental illness right and then we discuss it openly and after discussing we now go look for literature and we look for right now with the digital space there's a lot of information right 
go to your nearest mental health practitioner and ask them questions mental health practitioners are they love questions they because they know if you're asking you're willing to learn and reduce ignorance where we don't have questions we have a lot of myths we have a lot of lies we have a lot of mistruths right and anyone who doesn't know is open to say whatever they want but if you go to the people who know right then you ask openly ask even as ask all the questions you think are ridiculous i think we've had it all and we're open to hearing more right so we want a situation where more people are asking come talk to us come talk to us in the school come talk to us at work come talk to us in the cafeteria come talk to us because once we spread the information you now start learning again i said it one in four right so it stops being that person it becomes it could be us it becomes oh yeah my cousin has been showing some symptoms what can i do does that mean now that they had an episode they cannot go back to work no we have those conversations and then if there has been an episode a disturbing episode at work environment for example have a debrief mm. right call the professionals to come and talk to you about it such that it stops being a trauma in your lives it becomes a learning point mm-hmm. right we learn more about it and we talk openly without uh, all these cheesy rukwa rogwa the adjectives all these other adjectives yeah. that don't really tell you much yeah right yeah. let it be that person was aggressive mm-hmm. let us discuss it yeah. that person was crying let us discuss it mm-hmm. that person was dancing on the table and trying to take off their clothes let us discuss it mm-hmm. because it stops being special yeah yeah yeah, yeah i was going to say start the conversation um and and you're finding that um for example like nowadays you're finding companies um requesting for health talks you know from mental health professionals uh, and not only mental health professionals even people with lived experiences so that you can get both sides of the coin huh? um having even these um um environments or resources within the institution for debriefing uh for example or just having these safe spaces where people can speak freely uh about mental illness without feeling judged without feeling stigmatized uh, as well so in the school in in the educational system i think having it as a unit or a subject uh at primary school level secondary school level even university level i think would help a lot in um breaking the stigma and creating that awareness lastly i think confidentiality is also very important uh in institutions if someone for example is um afflicted with a mental illness and they come to like the hr or you know they they tell a manager or their supervisor it's very important that it's treated with confidentiality so that you know when this you know when they leak there's a lot of he said she said broken telephone kind of narratives and it becomes like rumors that don't really help the situation as well yeah yeah i think mm-hmm. i would want to speak to the education because i feel passionately mm-hmm. about this mm-hmm. and two things um mental health and environmental studies so in this case we're talking about mental health mm-hmm. i think even as they are looking at the the curriculum it would be so important to have mental health awareness yeah. in understandable language from the beginning mm-hmm. if children grow up knowing that mental illness is just illness mm-hmm. from a very early stage in understandable parts right so it could start from pictures when they're in grade 1 mm-hmm. all the way to some basic psychology while they're in form 4 mm-hmm. this is a population who when they go to the workspace mm-hmm. they're going to be the hr they're going to be the policy makers mm-hmm. they're going to be the managers mm-hmm. 
they're going to be the cleaning staff yeah. they're going to be at every level of the society and because they have been taught slowly over time they can approach it with ease yeah. it's no longer as as we're not having a situation of stigma mm -hmm. because everyone has been taught about mental health yeah. mental illness mm -hmm. right and these are also people who will have good health seeking habits mm -hmm. because they've already been taught yeah. that if i have this situation going on at home or at work or so and so did this to me when i was on my way to work there's no shame mm -hmm. right because they know if this happens mm -hmm. i go see a doctor yeah. right just like if they have a deep cut wound mm -hmm. there's no shame they won't hide that yeah. they have a deep cut wound yeah. right mm -hmm. they'll go see the nurse the school nurse mm -hmm. they'll go tell their teacher i have a deep cut wound yeah. same thing for mental illness mm -hmm. so i think it's so important mm -hmm. if we can as as they're rewriting as they're looking at the, the curriculum, curriculum in the country I would be so proud mm -hmm. of a Kenya who has mental health mm -hmm. from the primary school level yeah. all the way up to the higher levels mm -hmm. of education yeah. because that is a population who will be working actively mm -hmm. just like we are now more aware about nutrition mm -hmm. we are now more aware about sunscreen mm -hmm. right so if all those are changing why not mental health mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I feel like first things first I think I feel like the media has a very big part and a bit, very big role to play here. Um the way um news or issues to do with mental illness is reported um I feel like uh tends to kind of contribute to the stigma uh, of mental illness. For example, if you look at um let's give the example of mass shootings for example that have been happening you hear it being reported as the, the the shooter had a history of mental illness and then it's left there but again people can be violent despite whether they have a mental illness or not you know it could be they have a history of violence it could be um you know they they, they were under the influence of something that made them disinhibited so i feel like the media has you know a responsibility in terms of reporting um also mental uh, health champions showing like the different um classifications of mental illness and not only the acute or 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 or, or severe cases so to speak and even offering like resources and more information about what mental illness is about so i think from that level there's there's the media that has a responsibility but also um advocacy and awareness i think um like celebrating and acknowledging awareness days you know i think it's very important in terms of breaking the stigma um and you know as i said before starting the conversation yeah. i think um you've touched on community champions mm -hmm. right yeah if within every major institution major institution i'm talking about churches mm -hmm. major institution i'm talking about sports major institutions i'm talking about administration major institution we had champions of mental health mm -hmm. then it means if there's an incident there's a go to person yeah. there's a resource person right. there's a resource um environment there's an sms platform I have just seen something I am disturbed someone responds immediately mm -hmm. right such that this conversation stops being hush hush right, right? it stops being kina unajua kwa kina mumbi kuna mtoto mwingine kuna mtoto mwingine hatujawahi muona it becomes kwa nini huyo mtoto hajaenda shule right yeah. if they have mental illness let them go and see a practitioner yeah. and we do our best to control it to manage it to treat mm. it in many circumstances mm. such that we now start seeing ah kina jose walikuwa na jose alikuwa na shida ya pombe lini miaka tatu imepita tunaiongelea sasa kwa nini mm. right such that now we now start seeing oh jose has started a business yeah. rather than mm -hmm. jose the alcoholic who has done so much work yeah with his team and his support systems 
to turn his life around we now acknowledge that we're not just seeing jose the alcoholic mm. we are seeing jose the businessman mm. jose the newly married man jose the teacher jose the leader in the church jose the the community mental health champion right mm. so we start seeing this association of mental illness it's not just the acute negative mm. setting it becomes there was an acute mm-hmm. mental health um, illness, mm-hmm. but more so now, mm-hmm. they're in recovery. Yeah. They are coping. Mm-hmm. They are doing their best, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Such that we humanize hum- we humanize mental illness. Just like so-and-so could have been bankrupt 10 years ago. We don't keep saying they were bankrupt. Are they mm-hmm. bankrupt mm-hmm. now? Yeah. If we give that person that allowance mm-hmm. of growth and change, mm-hmm. Why not the person with mental illness? Yeah. Let's humanize mental illness, mental health, so that whatever you would want said of you, how you would want to be treated, is how you treat others. Yeah. And if you don't know, ask. ask yeah. <laughs> if you don't know, ask. which are, yeah. there's a lot that we don't know. Mm. Just like in finance, mm. when we don't know, we ask the financial expert. Mm. We find out, we read books. Mm right we listen to blogs all those same thing with mental health mental illness ask create support systems the support systems need to be educated about mental health and mental illness this could be your family this could be at the workplace this could be your friends this could be your colleagues this could be your classmates right so if more people know about my mental illness and because these are my supports i'm a human being to them which means i will inform them i'm having a challenge and they are also looking out for me so if i have a challenge if i have um an episode so and so who is my sister will have recognized Mm. mumbi has not called me in four days Mumbi suffers from depression. Let me call and find out. Right? Such that maybe I have been asleep, I have been having an episode and I've not paid my rent. Rather than getting the many calls and texts and kubishiwa na landlord, my sister will call me, will yeah. come and find out and will talk to the landlord on my behalf. So you see, someone is advocating for me because they are part of my system that are created when I'm not having the mental health challenge. Mm-hmm. Same thing. If I have a patient with dementia, they're getting older. They create systems where in their finances, they are not the only person to sign out, right? right? Such that no one can come as a parasite and tell, make them sign documents where I am now held liable for the debt of so and so, right? If it it becomes me and my partner must sign, then I am protected, mm-hmm. right? So creating systems around you that support you, mm-hmm. and this system can only be created once they're educated, yeah. right? And once we advocate in the community, mm-hmm. when you go for your um, reviews. Don't go alone. You might not always get someone, but the more appointments, let's say you get an, your, your, the diagnosis is made when you're 24. You have your family who will go with you initially. And then as you grow, you get your friends to attend one or two consults with you. They are learning as they go. And then later it becomes your partner. They are learning as they go. And then later it becomes your children. They are learning as they go. So that at any point within maybe this 30, 40, 50 years of life from 24, there's people in my life who know my circumstances. So it's very unlikely that I will suffer violence because no one is around me. The people around me who love and care for me yeah. know about my condition. Mm. So they protect me yeah. when I cannot protect myself. Mm. And when I can, I advocate for myself just like anyone else mm. in the culture, in the community. Yeah, yeah.
yeah and and also i think um insight also plays a big role insight in terms of just understanding the nature of the condition understanding your triggers and understanding your needs what level of support do you feel is beneficial for you and and this means also identifying the resources of your wellness uh, resources of your wellness are the people the places and the things that you feel contribute to your positive wellness and and these resources now act as a support structure i also feel like boundaries are, are, are quite important right because boundaries one thing about identifying and establishing boundaries is working with your needs what are my emotional needs for example what are my mental health needs for example what are my financial needs what are my physical needs and once you've established those needs you're able to apply uh, the boundaries that contribute to your self-care that act as protective factors and that you know contribute to your continuous wellness and, and cultivating uh, genuine relationships so yeah and i think um mm. just like you said the positive supports and, yeah. and resources mm. we also must address the triggers, triggers yeah right so if you know mm. that you cannot be stable or you have a challenge mm. in social settings mm -hmm. create a life around the social settings that you cannot manage mm. so for example if it's a wedding if you cannot manage the big reception because you might get an acute panic attack it's very simple to go to the church ceremony which is calmer there's less noise there's less um, interference so you will have attended that social service won't you you will have attended part of the community and because your social supports know that you cannot manage the big wedding ceremony later you'll be excused so you see, you 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 identify the trigger, which is the noise, the yeah. dancing, the dust, the group situation, and you've avoided that. But you've still been part of your community. You've still been part of your family because you attended the wedding, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So identifying triggers. Mm -hmm. If substance use is a trigger for you, right? Change your route. Mm -hmm. If it, if, if it becomes huko kwa base ndio nikitembea hapo lazima nichukue kitu change your route until you are strong enough not to be affected by that base environment right change your route to where you're not going to be attracted you're not going to be tempted right because you know when i take alcohol um everyone gets annoyed and i go home Daddy yells at me, mommy yells at me, I get silent treatment, sita lishwa, all those things, mm. right? So you see, you identify your triggers, yeah. whatever they may look like. And triggers, everyone needs to know what triggers them as much as possible. Yeah. And I've given you two different examples. Mm. So triggers are not only violent. Mm. Triggers are not only yelling. Triggers could be something as simple as I have cash i have a hundred thousand mm. in my m pesa mm. that makes me go wild a good time <laughs> a good time can a be, good a time to be a trigger <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? so if you know immediately you have money it yeah. burns a hole in your pocket yeah. create systems that you're not paid directly into your m pesa it goes into your bank yeah. right mm. that way we avoid three months of recovery mm. right because of one good thing you got yeah, a payday yeah right mm -hmm. so identifying your triggers and creating systems mm -hmm. around them is yeah. very important mm -hmm. so my name is kevin gashe i'm a consultant psychologist speak up and stop the violence um i'm dr mobi cheke consultant psychiatrist and mental health advocate prevent violence it's everyone's business mm -hmm.